Good morning and welcome to Stock Market Today. It is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020, and I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics. You can find me on Twitter. I am at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to chaikinanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where I get a lot of the content for this show, as well as give you daily stock ideas to consider. That hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities ended lower in Monday's trading, though off the worst levels of the day. S&P 500 is now 35% below the all-time high. Energy, financials, and healthcare underperformed. Consumer discretionary, tech, and comm services were leadership. Treasuries rallied. The dollar was weaker on the yen, but stronger, uh, weaker on the euro, stronger on the yen. Gold was up five and a half percent. WTI crude uh, added three percent on the day. As we get to the desk this morning, futures are trading limit up. Asian markets were higher overnight. European markets are also rallying. Treasuries are weaker across the curve. The dollar is weaker on the major crosses. Gold is up three and a half percent after rising more than five and a half percent yesterday. And WTI crude is up 6% after adding 3% yesterday. As we look at the structure of the S&P 500 here, we will try to retake the 2018 lows today. The S&P futures are lock limit up about 5%. We're going to try to fight our way back uh, above these 2018 lows. We closed it below them again yesterday. Uh, if that fails, we're still looking at uh, 2,000 to 2,100 to the downside. Resistance begins around the 2,700 level. Um, RSI is holding in bearish ranges and shake in money flow uh, is neutral with a slight bearish bias. So uh, going to be a lot of excitement today as the futures are trading 5% higher. Uh, turnaround Tuesday. Let's not lose sight of the fact that we did make a new low yesterday uh, for this move. Uh, continue to look under the hood, seeing some faint signs of selling pressure abating. Could this be the start of a bear market rally? Could this be the start of something different? Maybe uh, we want to keep an open mind uh, and just continue to watch the facts and let the trends dictate, uh, but just keep an open mind. So I say stay engaged. Uh, these markets can turn on a dime. Turning now to our market in a minute, what are we writing about? Well, new bear market low for the SPY yesterday, but the bond proxies are beginning to underperform. And could that be the sign of a near-term bottom in the markets? Got new relative highs for technology, but it divergence is in place. Com services makes a strong relative move to the upside. We're going to take a look at that as well as a stock that I think if you are looking for ideas, uh, there are certain stocks out there that have held up well, relative strength, where it makes sense to maybe... Take a small trade with tightly managed risk. Futures point to a higher open today. Turning now to the major indices from a power bar perspective, Dow down 3% yesterday, zero bulls, five bears. S&P 500 down 2.7%, one bull, 139 bears. And I've never seen 2.5%, 2.7% to the downside feel like a win. NASDAQ buck the trend was up small. Uh, watch the cues here. Watch 180 on the cues here today. Uh, two bulls, 23 bears. Small caps actually outperformed for a third day in a row. Uh, still skewed majorly in favor of the bears, however. Bonds uptick, sending yields lower. According to the Chaikin Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks remain strongly bearish. Major indexes across the board remain strongly bearish. And I said I was going to point out a stock for you today, and it's a stock I'm highlighting in my note. And it's Google. Now, Google has a neutral plus rating. Basically, what that means is the factors are bullish, but since the stock is below this declining trend line, we give it a neutral plus, right? That's the overlay of the fundamentals and the technicals. However, I'm encouraged by the fact that Google tried to undercut its 2019 low yesterday and then rallied back above to hold this 1050 level. Look at the relative strength. This is what I'm talking about, folks. As the market sells off, look for stocks that have relative strength that, are, look, like, that look like this or that have been persistently high. Those are your likely leaders coming out. Those are the stocks where if you're going to look to play upside in a bear market rally, uh, those are the stocks that I think you should look for. Take a look at Google. Neutral plus rating, but outperforming the market. Overbought, oversold indicator in an oversold position. Money flow mixed, but with a bullish bias. Obviously, we're under the trend line. The trend is weak. The industry is weak. But I'm highlighting it today uh, in my note. I think if you are looking to add some exposure to take advantage of what could be a bear market rally, these are the types of names that you want to look at. I'm not 
broadly advocating to push all in bullish. All right, that's not what I'm seeing yet. But what I am seeing is some opportunities to scalp some trades. And you should maybe take a look at a name like Google. And as always, manage your risk, right? These are, these are riskier. They can turn quick. Managing your risk help you get out on the way up and it'll protect your capital uh, as we look for opportunities here. Turning now to our sector tracker, the movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Comms at the top of the list. Remember, comms is one of the areas that we liked going in and it's held up pretty well. Discretionary, probably benefiting from the fact that Amazon is a big weight, as is Walmart. Uh, discretionary towards the top of the list. All still lower, by the way, over the past five days. Tech, another area we've liked uh, heading in, and it has held up on a relative basis. Material staples, healthcare and fins, middle of the road, the utes and the industrials and the real estate and the energy are at the bottom of the list. And it's encouraging to me to see the utilities at the bottom, heading towards the bottom of this list. We're going to take a look at the relative charts of REITs and UTEs a little bit later in the show. Energy uh, continues to be off my radar screen for the time being. Turning now to our industry in focus. Our industry in focus today is software and services, which over the past six months has been a slight outperformer, uh, less than 1%. However, the power bar ratio, like most industries and most sectors, is bearish. 36 bearish stocks for only one bullish stock. It's very weak. It's currently ranked, however, number six of 21 subsectors, having moved up three slots over the past week. So uh, obviously a lot of bearish names in there. So we want to avoid Altair Engineering, Coupa, and Appian, all with very bearish ratings. However, I do think software is going to be one of the areas that leads us out uh, once we do get through a bottoming process. Uh, why is that? Well, Neutral plus rating, weak trend, obviously. But look, beginning to show some signs of stabilization down here around the $70 level. And uh, we've seen a big rebound in relative strength over the past couple of days. Now, we're not quite bullish yet, uh, but that big rebound in relative strength does jump out at me. Right? I think you're going to want to focus on some of the bigger names uh, within this software group. Once we do start to see a base process, look for the leaders, right? Look, for my, look at Microsoft's relative strength. Look at Adobe's relative strength. Uh, names like that are going to be the names where you really want to be focused. Uh, should we begin to see a stabilization play out in the market? Now, my base case is interim rally and then a retest. That hasn't changed. Uh, but I'm open to the idea that an interim rally could be sharp. I mean, we have fallen 35% in a little over a month. All right? Who's to say you can't see a big rally to the upside? You can uh, manage risk. There will be opportunities to scalp it on the way. Uh, I think you want to look for in software. I think you want to look within tech, healthcare, and comm services, really, uh, as the three main sectors of the market, uh, that are likely the most compelling for ideas. Remember, go back here, right? Remember what's been hot, Re not hot, but remember what you've seen a lot towards the top of this list, right? You've seen healthcare there. You've seen tech there, right? You've seen comm services there, right? Look at a name like Google as a, you know, if you're looking for, like buy the higher quality stuff, if you want to play for a rally, um, I know a lot of people will tell you to buy the junk for like short covering rallies. That's not my MO. I never think it makes sense to own garbage. Uh, anyway, taking a look at what's trending now, yesterday's S and P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Uh, Royal Caribbean tends to continues to be volatile around COVID-19. Obviously the travel and leisure space massively impacted wild swings on both sides of the board there. Uh, FLIR, Goldman Sachs reiterated their buy rating despite taking their price target down. That was enough to send this very bearish stock up by 13.5% yesterday. ADS, uh, can, uh, a little bit of a rebound here. Stock's down over 70% year to date. Uh, ADS rebounds 12.5%. In a mixed uh, to slightly lower tape yesterday, Hasbro CEO made some comments uh, that they're still seeing solid signs of demand and supply chain for them is starting to normalize. Uh, obviously, want to be on the lookout for good news um, and bad news and keep an open mind. Uh, Boeing, a lot of commentary there, going to suspend their dividend and buybacks. CEO and some other C-suite executives uh, suspending pay for this beleaguered uh, company, Boeing up 11% on 
on the day yesterday. Loser side of the board, Coles, KSS, uh, down with the soft lines, 17.4% uh, to the bear side of the coin. Holly Frontier, Valero, and LKQ, all energy stocks that were down yesterday. Didn't see anything company specific. Obviously, still a lot of volatility around the energy complex. And TFC, uh, down with the other regional banks yesterday, 14.5%. Like I said yesterday, folks, look at the vol here. I mean, both sides of the coin, a lot of volatility, right? A lot of opportunity, but also a lot of opportunity to get hurt pretty quickly. Uh, I want to give the market some time to stabilize. All right, so what are we looking at, right? As always, we're going to look under the hood for signs of stabilization, right? Uh, signs of selling pressure is diminishing. Signs that, you know, sentiment might be improving a little bit, right? And take a look at the bond proxies, right? We've talked about real estate a lot, how, you know, there's some areas of that, like residential, uh, you know, commercial, commercial real estate and the uh, senior living facilities have been under pressure. But look at the bond proxies here coming under pressure, right? They started to outperform the start of the year. That was potentially a tell. Now they're underperforming. That's something that we're watching closely. Maybe this is the sign that we're getting close to an interim bottom here. Or maybe, maybe yesterday was the interim bottom. Who knows? We don't know. But we want to look for the signs, right? And one of the signs that we should certainly be paying attention to is these traditionally defensive areas of the market, these bond proxies, these areas of the equity market where people hide out in times of... Uh, you know, volatility and concern uh, beginning to underperform. That's a solid, that's something we want to really be paying uh, close attention to, right? We also want to start to pay attention to the consumer staples, see if they start to roll off, right? Pay attention to see if more offensive areas in the market, and we're going to look at a couple, right? Semis had a nice relative day yesterday, right? Areas like technology. Take a look at TAC, new all-time high on a relative basis for XLK here. Uh, XLK relative to the SPY, so Tech Selector Spider relative to the S&P 500, still in a solid uptrend, right? Off, you know, solid, steady uptrend. A little bit of an acceleration to the upside above the 200-day moving average. Now, th this is despite tech being down, right? Remember, relative strength could be, you know, going up more than the market, going up while the market goes down. Or in the case of a lot of the names that we're seeing here and a lot of the sectors that are exhibiting relative strength, it means going down less than the overall market. Uh, why do we care? Because as you've heard me say numerous times, these are the areas of the market that are likely to lead once we do begin to form a base. Once we begin to stabilize and move higher, right? The areas that, that held up better are likely, likely, not guaranteed to be, right? Dan didn't guarantee you anything, I never will. Dan speaks in terms of probabilities and uncertainties when it comes to the markets. Uh, but these are likely to be the areas of the market that outperform. Uh, one concern that I have is this bearish divergence. We called it out last week as the relative ratio makes a new high, the RSI is making lower highs. It's still holding bullish ranges for now, but just something to be aware of, right? We saw this divergence back in mid-February for the S&P 500, if you'll recall. Okay, so keep an open mind, something to pay attention to. And I highlighted Google earlier. Uh, why am I highlighting it today? Well, here's a big part of the reason why. Look at XLC. Com services on a relative basis. So XLC relative to the SPY. Look at this break from the consolidation. 50 crosses the 200-day golden cross for the ratio. RSI now overbought after holding in bullish ranges. Right, and a big breakout on a relative basis for calm services. So if I'm looking for potential ideas to scalp for a bear market rally, I'm looking in XLC, I'm looking in XLK, I'm looking in XLV. Okay. Those are the areas that have held up the best. Look for the stocks in those areas that have held up the best. Find the stocks that are showing cheek and relative strength. Take our 14 day trial, cheek analytics.com forward slash test drive to sign up. Have a great turnaround Tuesday, everybody. I will be back here with you tomorrow.